Last summer, I had taken a trip. It wasn't just some ordinary trip. I set off to take an adventure. And on this adventure, so I took a, I went out to the countryside, where it was very rural, and I had spent quite a bit of time just working, working little jobs, scraping a little money together. I ended up, I ended up purchasing a horse over the break. So I took my horse out and we went for a long ride, looking, exploring for adventure. It was very rural, very long trails. It was helpful to get around. After a time, but we couldn't find very much adventure. And there was just many trees, shrubs, and a couple of rabbits. So we kept traveling until we couldn't travel anymore. And at this time, we decided to take a break. We stopped by a river, and we started, we wanted to regain our stamina. So I went down to the river and gathered some water for my horse. But as I was coming back, turned around and looked around, and I couldn't see my horse inside. I wondered and started to search. Started searching the, uh, the immediate areas within my, the area. Just then, a large shadow flew right over my, the ground. And immediately, I looked, looked towards the skies, and right in front of me landed an enormous dragon. So I pulled out my <laughs> shield, and I unsheathed my sword, and I prepared for the battle. <laughs> <laughs> As the tension started to stir and the deadly mood set in, this was a perfect time for my mom to inconveniently, inconveniently interrupt me and tell me to pause my video games and start helping around the house. So obviously we all know that dragons don't exist, but they do in the realm of video games. And video games are a type of software in computer technology. So my my topic today is going to be about computer technology, more specifically about the software aspect. So let's talk a little bit about computer technology to begin with. We have two main portions of it. We have the hardware and we have the software. Hardware is more of the physical component and the actual electronics of the computers and of the technology. Software is the metadata <coughs> that's programmed into these components, and they give the computers the instructions, instructions function properly, and to carry out the procedures. So, my, my presentation is gonna cover a little bit about the history of what, of how far, of where software of where software came, uh, started from, and how far it's come, and then we'll take a little bit of look about a little bit of time to look at where software is today and how it's all around us. As for then we'll go into looking at how it, how much it takes to create software and who's part of this. So you guys may wonder, like, why would I really need to know about this? But if you think about it. Software is in most of technology today, and unless you're Amish, you definitely use software. <laughs> so, according to a book by Robert L. Glass, in the beginning, in the beginning, regulations of software pioneers, he breaks up the time from 1955 to about 2000 into three main eras. First, we come along with the pioneering era, which is when first, when computers first started coming around, and they started to come around, and they took up large rooms such as this room, and it was one computer that was that was set up to do very specific functions like just hold data and maybe print lists. These these computers were very large and very time consuming, so they didn't have very set schedules. So as teams wanted to make new programs, they'd have to sign up for time, and time delays were very inevitable. So time management was very not a thing of their, not a strong suit in development. But, but this era was, this era was pushed into the next era with the help of IBM's new mainframe, IBM 3, 360, which didn't help to make the new computers, but it helped to make a, 
a storage device that was able to be removed, and this allowed for um, programmers to not only use it for scientific uses, but also business uses. And this also allowed uh, programmers not only to have to rewrite their codes for the new computers that came out every year or so, but it allowed them to continue to develop their own current, current projects. So the stabilize, this was known as the stabilizing era. And the stabilizing era allowed for more, more development and advancement to each program. This, this era, with the advancement and advancement and movement forward with the software, hardware had to catch up. So hardware had to be a little more complex, and they started to shrink, which brought us into the micro era, which allowed programmers to have a desktop and a computer at their desk, so, we, so it was a lot easier for them to work. Um, this micro era has continued on to us and is still into in our society today, which we can see nowadays in iPads. They're a lot smaller and they don't need as much storage. With the help of the internet, we can we can store things over the internet and we don't need memory cartridges to move the data from one to another. We can just simply download it and have it on our device. So in today, we have definitely softwares all over us. And yeah, I'm talking about apps. Even regardless whether you have an iPhone or an Android, or even don't have a smartphone at all, we've all seen apps. And we all know that they have different uses. Some are messaging, some are media, and some are navigation. So there are plenty of different uses of them. As for, it, as for what creates the software, it's not just a single person who's sitting at a desk working on countless hours for, for a single software. It definitely takes a team, it, and according to an in a 2006 internet.com e development ebook, uh, it breaks it, its development into two main levels: the architectural level and then the developmental level. Architects, ar software architects, structure the outline and design the blueprints of the program itself. As for programmer and developers. They actually are the workhorses who do the encoding and write the scripts and create the project to run. So without either of these two, then the prop, then you guys wouldn't be able to play Flappy Bird or go onto Facebook or use any type of application. So just to review back what we've covered today, we've looked at a little bit of the history going from pioneering era all the way to the micro era. We've also taken a look at applications that we all use today, and then we've also looked at a couple of the positions and the teams that create are used to create the softwares that we use. Next time you guys think about, <laughs> next time you guys go on Facebook, use Flappy Bird, or even use a map, Google Maps to get to your new destination. Just remember and think about how many people have spent countless hours sitting at desks just to give you guys all the all the applications that you benefit.